On today's show, we're going behind the scenes to hang with Formula Drift points leader Reese Millen and Team RMR. We'll start out at his shop to meet the crew and then tag along for a test and tune, catch a few waves, and become a member of the team during the dramatic fifth round of the Formula Drift Championship in Chicago. Reese Millen is the Formula Drift points leader and was the first factory back drifter in history with his killer Pontiac GTO. Drifting may be a new sport, but Reese is no newbie to the world of sliding. Reese Millen Racing kind of started from my backgrounds and roots in motorsport. You know, I had my father that kind of led the way and has been active in motorsport. Reese's pops is Rod Millen, known to the rally world as the king of the hill. Rod has won titles in just about every kind of vehicle and helped introduce Reese to driving sideways at an early age. 1992, I started racing. 94, I got some support from Toyota in uh, the form of a twin turbo Toyota Supra to race up Pikes Peak. I had to build and design several products, which I did at that point in my father's shop. Exhaust systems and strut bars and air filters and stuff like that. People started calling me wanting that downpipe, that exhaust system. So that was kind of the foundation of the company. At that point, before I got factory funding, the part sales got put back into the racing and the racing in turn fed the parts. I have a great crew underneath me now that, that take care of the day-to-day -day running of the company. But between us, we, we get the job done. I have Blair, who is the team manager. How did it fall off? Scott works on the cars, works on customer cars. Frank, I don't yell at you too much, do I? Yeah. Frank is responsible for most of the fuel management wiring. The car doesn't just come back from an event and get parked and get washed off and go to a vent. It comes back, you know, the differentials pulled apart, the crown and wheel and ring pinion are looked at, the clutch plates are looked at, the um, clutches and transmission are dropped out, and the oils are changed every event. Changes on half shafts, on differentials, on clutches and transmissions halfway through the season, so you do not have a mechanical failure at the event. I can hop in that car and beat on it like you have to at drifting and knowing that every aspect of the car is, is fail-safe. Fail-safe design doesn't come overnight, which is why RMR uses all their racing knowledge to further the success of the team, like the trick spoiler they've adopted for the GTO. It's the first time someone's used some sort of aerodynamic aid in drifting, but it's straight from what you'd see on an oval sprint car. If you see this car in a corner speed, it will approach a lot of people in a corner, gain momentum, gain ground on them, mostly because of the pressure that's being put against this, I'm still on the throttle where they're balancing the slide on and off the throttle. It's quite impressive to see how much side bite you can get in a drift from this car versus other cars. Rather than going to a cable-assisted handbrake, we have a hydraulic handbrake in here, which is straight from the rally cars that I used to run. So that, that sits there, and I can just pull on it very lightly, and it has a lot of, a lot of mechanical feel rather than trying to jerk yourself out of the seat to slide the car. We've put a lot of development into the steering angle. On a standard car, you would have about 30 degrees. On this car, we've increased it to, uh, but about 68 degrees. Steering, we have a multiplier. So rather than having three turns to make the wheels turn full lock, we have one and a half turns. So I can sit there and make adjustments really critical at high speed to place the car where I want to. It's a unique driving style. It's a style that suits me and seems to give us an advantage in, in certain areas, especially in a decreasing slide when you're trying to still maintain momentum. For someone who's never driven this car and to try to drive it, they, they would be lost. They would feed the wheel in and the car would go automatically left after they fed it in right. Whereas a normal car, you would just slide it. I can get this car at just about 90 degree angles with the wing that we have on it and drive out of it without stopping or without sliding or spinning. It's pretty impressive to see this thing in action. 
Coming up after the break, Reese tries to hold it together while this tranny comes apart. This week with Reese Millen, the 2005 Formula Drift Championship points leader through the fifth event of the season. Being perfect isn't easy, even for Reese Millen. In order to help ring out the potential of the GTO, testing and tuning before the event is absolutely necessary. We're here at uh, California Speedway, um, lot 12. So we're here to test parts on the car, um, make sure that everything is, is functionally correct. E essentially run it the amount of time that we'd run it at an event to establish if anything is going to go wrong. This car is actually pretty pitching for just about any course. At the start of last season, we had issues with our power steering, just because this sport is just so aggressive on a lot of the engine components. After only a couple of runs, Ooh. the GOAT grinds to a halt, proving that even factory back guys need to test and tune. If I'm going to be right, I'm going to laugh so hard. I think the tranny just locked up. As a drive, you have to be aware of everything that goes on with the car, and, and I know this car so well um, that I could start to hear from the last event that the transmission was starting to whine. And, and I brought it to the attention of the guys. Um, you know, Luis tells me that he told us at Houston that it was whining. If he told me at Houston it was whining, I'd have done something about it. You know, Luis might have told Tanner that it was whining, or might have told somebody else, but he certainly didn't tell me. Should we have changed it precautionary? It's obviously a communication issue. Yeah. Um, I guess you could say we got lucky and now we have the opportunity to change it. Rather than write off a day of practice because of a bum transmission, Team RMR decided to swap in the spare tranny so Reese could keep driving. We toasted a tranny, but luckily we have spare stuff laying around. Swapping the transmission on the blacktop proves to be no big challenge for Frank and Scott. I'm not one for quitting, and I don't know Reese isn't one for quitting. I'm really happy that the guys decided to change it out here rather than going back to the shop. Um, it's allowed us to run the car now today. It's allowed me to have some more time behind the wheel and feel confident that I can get in the car and it's going to function the way that I need it to at Chicago. With the car packed up and on its way to Chicago, Reese calls in a couple of fellow pro drivers, Rich Rutherford and Tanner Faust, to blow off the day as far away from cars as possible. Car's dialed in. I'm really happy, really confident for the event. I got the day off. So Tanner and Rich are coming over, and, and we're going to go do some mountain biking. It's not very often that we all have the same day off together with filming and instructing and, and racing and that. So we all hung out, decided to go down and go hit the trails. Even out on the trail on two wheels, the drifters still have to battle. Although it's play, we're always very competitive. You know, you, you use each other to, to push and raise your own bar if it's going down a hill quick or or if the other guy's riding up a hill and you feel like you want to stop, you know, his, his encouragement will, will push you to, to go a little harder and, and make it up there so you don't look like the, the weaker of the bunch. It's always fun, and, and me, as my nature is very competitive, I always like to win, so have, having Tanner in front of me is, is a goal to reel him in. Breakfast of champions. Ooh, Tanner's got more grapes than me. back here for a snack, and, and now we're gonna go hit the water. All right, let's go, sir. Let's do it. <laughs> Trading their helmets for wetsuits, Reese, Tanner, and Rich head west to rip a few waves, or maybe just pull a few muscles. We're uh, down at San Onofre. Old man's gonna go surfing to the south of home. Rich is the pro at this. Tanner and I are on our second season. Well, when we're mountain biking, Reese and Tanner showed me the way, but now that we're out surfing, the roles are going to be reversed a little bit. Now I get to have a little fun with them. Being out here amongst the bikinis and seagulls is a far cry from the fire and brimstone of the track. Withdrawn from motorsport and the competition to motorsport, you know, the explosiveness, the, the speed, the sound, and, and then you're out here and it's just like a completely different environment. You, you can be at completely different levels, but you know, you can enjoy the day with your friends. It's a little hard to tell who's out there, except that Rich is the only one left standing. 
so bad that you can slide cards. Because <laughs> the yeah, cards suck. Yeah. Reese has found peace in the ocean. But coming up after the break, he's got to keep the GTO in one piece in Chicago. Welcome back to Formula D. We're hanging with points leader Reese Millen and crew for round five of the Formula Drift Championship. We're in Chicago. We've come into this event with a 51-point lead. You know, it's it's important that I be consistent, adapt to this track well, and try to hold the points to Irwindale. Reese is looking good. He's getting real close to the wall, real clean lines. Uh, we're just trying to keep him off the wall as uh, other people seem to be hitting him. This is, this is drifting. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, and it did during Friday's practice. Though he only needs to qualify to keep his points lead, Reese put the entire championship in jeopardy by tagging the wall hard on an overzealous practice run. My nerves were, were a little rattled. Your K barrier, your concrete barrier, is not running typically the angle that we had run. Typically, it'd run parallel and arc away from it. The issue is, right before you flick the car, there's a hollow in the entry. I left it right on top of it. You almost need to flick it earlier before it, but I wanted to get really close to the wall, and it just compressed the car, and the car actually didn't step out on me. It almost just went sideways, hit the barrier, and at that point, I was just a passenger. Shock to everybody, um, especially Reese. When Reese hit the wall, the driver's side rear took the brunt of the impact and ended up toasting the entire rear control arm. Took the whole yoke assembly and just twisted it inside the housing. I'm a freaking idiot. Ah. Without the proper tools, time, or replacement parts, Team RMR stays up all night cobbling the GTO back together. But no one is confident that the temporary fix is going to hold. Basically, we cut the whole rear trailing arm the whole end piece completely off and then realigned it to the car with the drive shaft and everything hooked in and basically just welded it back together and hopefully it'll work. The wheel bearing obviously took a pound and at one point I couldn't even turn the wheel. You could feel the slop in there. Um, obviously the bearings dried out. That's something that Reese needs to keep in the back of his mind. It could literally let go at any point. I'm just going to have to work back up to speed and, and hopefully in an hour and a half in an hour, um, we'll, we'll have a car ready for qualifying. We'll definitely be back on the track uh, in time for qualifying, but uh, we're, we're definitely suffered a pretty good blow. You know, as long as Reese can get one good qualifying run, you know, it kind of keeps us out ahead. The wheel bearing has been obviously a bad issue because when we heated up the, the upright, it toasted the wheel bearing. That's basically my main concern right now. Because the car is clearly not 100%, Frank wants to preserve the GOAT, but after a few laps, it's clear that it's Reese's confidence that has sustained the most damage. Frank, I have to keep running. Hey, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Either we're going to qualify or we're not. The wheel bearing's not an issue right now, it is me, OK? I mean, initially, I was going to only keep him out there for maybe three laps, just again because of the wheel bearing. But um, Reese explained, and I fully understand that you know, his mind, he had to get his mind back into it because the car felt good to him. I just have to come up to speed now. I'm too afraid to throw it away like I just about did yesterday. During qualifying, it was hard to tell there were ever any problems at all. Time for sixth place, the Kiwi Reese Mellon. I'll have to say, I, I shed a little tear after qualifying. I just about threw away the whole championship yesterday. Drawn Ken Gushi for the first round. He's beaten me more times than I've beaten him. The car's not quite right, but I'm pretty confident that we can move through to the top eight. The crowd was on its feet for the last battle of the round of 16 in Chicago between the future Ken Gushi and Mad Skills Reese Millen. Reese Millen versus Ken Gushi, Team Toyo Mustang. Whoa! There was contact with Reese and Ken just at the exit of the big right-hand sweeper. As Reese went wide, Ken tried to duck in underneath, but ended up making contact with Millen's front bumper. 
as he swung across the front of me, his exhaust tip cut through the oil cooler and we started to lose power steering fluid. They said they can't fix it. Well, I can fix anything. What's that? I'll fix the control arm. I can fix it. <laughs> well, do you have, can you do it in a reasonable amount of time? That's the question. Um, yeah, give me 10 minutes. Under ordinary circumstances, the rules state that teams only have five minutes to fix any problems with their cars. But because Reese's problems seem to be a direct result of his collision with Gucci, the judges can give Team RMR a little more time. Hey, Ryan, uh, they're saying they can get it fixed here in uh, about 10 minutes. I went a little wide, but obviously not wide enough. With the oil cooler damaged, we need to bypass it. Frank basically eliminated the oil cooler by connecting the two lines together. So essentially now it's going to run from the power steering pump to the rack that our oil temperatures increase rapidly without the cooler. So we may have bigger issues yet to come. Here we go, Ken Gucci, Reese Millen, battle of the century. Reese Millen got his power steering fixed. Ken Gucci leading. Reese Millen has nothing to lose. Lost all his body parts, but he's all over Ken Gucci. The battle of the broad right here in Chicago. After the second run, the judges decided they needed to see them run one more time. This is bad news for Team RMR, as the power steering pump can overheat at any time. GM Racing, Reese Millen, the Kiwi, missing a front bumper, got taken off by Ken Gushi's back bumper. Reese Millen, nothing to lose. Ken Gushi all over Reese, sucking up on his back bumper. Are they going to exchange paint? Reese Millen corrects mid-drift. Tight run, give it up, Chicago! Reese Millen, Ken Gushi pulling away. Is Reese Millen going to be all over him? Whoa, look at that! Right on his door! Two of America's top drifters, Reese Millen, Ken Gushi, both V8s, door handle to door handle, driving an awesome run, and all of Chicago is waiting to hear the results. Ken? Ed, Ken? Ken? Yeah, Ken. So the judges have spoken. Ken Gushi moves on to the great A. Ken Gushi moves on. I thought I put in a good drive. The handbrake wasn't working quite well when we led. I was in his passenger seat. I can't drive any closer or any harder than that. So if they're going to give it to Ken, he must have done something amazingly impressive from behind. The judges felt that Ken ran a smoother line, and that even though Reese was practically sitting in Ken's passenger seat, Reese had to correct too many times to take the win. All in all, just a frustrating weekend to hit the wall myself and to have this happen, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Even though Reese went out in the first round, the hard work of Team RMR paid off as they accomplished their goal of keeping the points lead. They are still out in front by a few points going into the final round in Irwindale. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we're spooling up the turbo on our Project 240. Hey guys, Maylene here at Turbonetics. We're in the final stages of building our G4 Formula D drift car, and today we're installing the turbo. So let's run inside and check in with Mark and Jane because they've already started, so let's see what they've done. Mark and Jane are two of Turbonetics' top R&D guys and are helping us out cram more air into the engine. What are you guys up to? Oh, you know, just putting on a nice big turbo intercooler, as you can see. Wow. Try to give the car some curious power for the track. So we all know a turbo is good. We know that it makes the car go fast and it makes a cool little noise. But, <laughs> but how does it work? Basically, the exhaust gas goes through here and spins this turbo. And by spinning this, sucks in air through here, compresses it, and puts it into the intake manifold. So more air is more power? Uh, in most cases, yes. How much more power is this going to give the car? Well, this can make probably a little over 400 horsepower with this turbo, while this is limited to about 270. Enough talking and fooling around, guys. Let's get to work. Jane here is putting in the intercooler piping. It's also bigger than the old piping, and it's also metal, which means it's not going to shatter, and there's better airflow. 
After the intercooler is plumbed, we finish things up by hooking up the intake and installing the Turbonetics blow-off valve, which allows the turbo to vent. We're done, guys! We did it. Great job. Look at all the hard work we did today. We put in the turbo system and the intercooler. It was so much fun working with you guys. Thanks for letting me help out. How'd I do? You're hired. I'm hired. You got the job. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys have a little bit more work to do, right? So I'm going to let you get to it. Bye, Thanks. guys. Thanks. Thank you very much. Bye. My job here is done. We just finished up here at Turbonetics where we installed a turbo system and intercooler. Next, the car is going to head over to AEM where it's going to get tuned and then we're getting sideways. AEM is one of the most successful tuner brands on the market, establishing a name early on in the sport compact scene. Greg Nakano is a tuner at AEM and is helping us out with mapping their engine management system in our Project 240. Our EMS is basically a complete standalone engine management system. Um, basically, it takes your factory computer, takes it completely out of the car, and we run it completely separate now. And uh, our computer's running the entire functions of the motor for timing, ignition, idle, you know, everything that we can control. Basically, what we're doing today is the way that I'm setting up the fuel map and the ignition map is, no matter what boost you're going to be at, it's going to be tuned for it. I'm using what's called a uh, boost compensation. So if you look at my fuel map right now, it's, it's flat all the way across. And what it's doing is it's actually adding the fuel and taking away fuel depending on what load you're at. So basically, at one bar of boost or 14.7 PSI, you need double the amount of fuel. So that's what I'm doing is basically I'm tuning the map one way and then no matter how much boost you have add on top of that, it's going to be tuned no matter what. And basically, it's going to do a few more pulls on it and, uh, you know, tweak up the ignition timing and stuff like that and tweak the, you know, the O2 sensor, the fuel, and uh, just get it to run perfect. And then pretty much done from there. The car is tuned and ready to rock. We'll take a closer look at our finished 240 at the last event in Irwindale. And I hear they may let me drive it. Thanks again to Gucci Auto, AEM, Turbonetics, US Earth, and all the other companies that helped us out. Woo! I did it! <laughs>